Welcome to Spectator Cast number four. You already know who the regular cast is. This week joining us, we have the champ, Mr. JJJ. Uh, we're going to talk about some things like Winter Brawl Aftermath. So, um, since Jay, you, and Zach were there, I'm going to let you guys talk about it. Am I the first special guest you guys have yes, had on the are. podcast? It's very yes. prestigious oh, man. This is better than winning Winter Brawl. <laughs> All right, stop bullshitting. Just <laughs> I think I think it is. You don't have to be mean about it. <laughs> this is going to be weird if they don't know our dynamics, Zach. <laughs> I think most people do by now. All right. But anyway, so uh, welcome to this cast, Jay. Uh, congratulations, first of all. Thank you. Uh, so, if uh, people are new to this, um, they will be able to see it on YouTube later. Um, this is Zero Effect and my co-host Forwind, uh, Cool C. McGee, and Fusion. Um, we are straight off the heels of Winter Brawl 9. Uh, first, I guess, um, before we get into the actual tournament, uh, tell, I guess, tell the people a little bit about uh, yourself in terms of how you got into competitive gaming and basically your come up to uh, being a pro, uh, pro so caliber player. A oh, pro so caliber player. Um, I guess how did I start? I started in high school. I started in Smash Melee, and then Brawl came out. I played that competitively for like six months. Realized it really wasn't the game for me, and then I switched over to traditional fighters. Around that time, that's when Soul Caliber Four and Street Fighter Four came out, and that's when the whole fighting game scene really, you know, exploded. So. I guess I'm the equivalent of a Soul Calibur 09er uh, to a certain degree. Yeah. Yeah, you pretty much came up with the rest of us uh, in the Philly scene, maybe about a year in. Uh, yeah, a little Soul bit Calibur after you guys. Four. I kind yeah. of came in when uh, it was you, Sporko, Malice, Woes, Insane Kent. Uh, what was Larry's gamer tag? I forgot. <laughs> uh, three, 350Z. That's right. And then Roger would show up every once in a while, and you guys were pretty much established, and then I just kind of came in. Okay, so did you, did you, um, so you were like, did you follow like the streams or the YouTube videos and all that beforehand before you decided to do this? Or was that kind of like, uh, the YouTube the stuff specifically to the Philly group or Soul Calibur YouTube well, stuff in just, general? Uh, just in general. In general, yes. Uh, I've been a YouTube monster since there was YouTube, uh, a Twitch monster since there was Twitch. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I basically followed everything, uh, found out about where the Jaxal Domes were. Uh, I was then introduced to Sean, who introduced me to Doug, who then told me about the sessions, and beep, bop, boop, and now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Um, so, Winter Brawl 9, you, told, you said to me at the very beginning of the tournament, when I, I asked you what would have to happen... Uh, at Winter Brawl for you to walk away satisfied uh -huh. with your performance. And you said that at, at third at the worst. And yeah. this was obviously before what happened in pools and you getting out of pools and winners. Yeah, I ended uh, up getting two places higher than third. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> Technically, in fact, yes. you probably got the best possible place, I would say. Out of all the places that, yeah. within yeah. the realm of possibility... I appreciated the fact that I got the one that I got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, what? How? How did you feel about going into your matches, specifically with IRM, uh, first in pools and then in uh, grand finals? Given the fact that you've played him so many times before in previous tournaments. Uh, when I was about to play him in pools, I was very much unexcited, and then when I was going to face him in grand finals, I was significantly more unexcited. <laughs> he was he was the one guy. He was the one guy I really didn't want to have to fight in grand finals because we had such a big history, and I, you know he's he well before Winter Brawl he had an overwhelmingly staggering higher tournament count against me, uh, and it was not something I was particularly looking forward to, but. Obviously, I'm happy with the way it turned out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, I, to be honest, I wasn't sure he was going to make it to face you um, once he was put into losers so soon. I thought that when he ran into Hawkeye, that might have been a problem for him. But, I mean, you got to give credit to where credit is due. IRM uh, showed his stuff. He 
I know him and Hawkeye have played several times, uh-huh. uh, Thunderdomes and Casuals or whatever. He managed to pull through, and he even managed to beat Sane, who was giving him a bit of a hard time uh, the night before. But we'll get to Sane a little bit later. Yeah, um, Sane, Sane was you, definitely the MVP. You the real you, MVP, Sane. <laughs> uh, was there any matches other than your own that you were impressed by or surprised by uh, either the results or, or you know who was play- how well somebody was playing or not playing. No, no. I think I think Zeff said it the best. I was the only impressive person at Winter Brawl, and that is the <laughs> end of it. Oh, and I that guess, concludes uh, our podcast. That, that, that really <laughs> does, so. I, I, I thought I thought for just a second to like when everybody was like, "All right, hey, welcome to the Spectator Cast and everything." I was just gonna like, "Hey guys, I won Winter Brawl," and then I was just gonna leave. <laughs> Drop the mic. I, I kind of yeah. wish I did that. Oh well. Yeah, well, it's too late now. Well, uh, to answer the question seriously, I appreciated your run, Zach. Of uh, when you were in Losers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When uh, you were you were really you was you were incredibly angry. After you lost to Sane, I'm not sure if that match was recorded. I can't remember if it was. I'm pretty sure it was. I hope okay. it was. So that happened in Winners, and you were really at odds with yourself after the end of it. And then you just sat down to this particular setup, and you went through what four different people, uh, just one after another, uh, including yeah, Sandman, think, who you've had yeah. a tough time with, Ring Out, who's incredibly good. Uh, that I really liked, and then. The other thing I liked was when Marginal was fighting Jimmy the Hat, and Marginal's face <laughs> yes. was that of utter rage. Yes. <laughs> that was fantastic. Uh, <laughs> all right, you need to for since since uh, the other guys weren't there, you probably should reenact. Oh, nobody else. Nobody else knows about this. No. No. It, how could they? It wasn't recorded. Uh, I, I thought Marginal talked about it in the chat, like <laughs> afterwards. But oh, uh, wow. so. I have no idea how the actual match went. I I, know, I saw none of the actual content of the game, uh, so you picture this in your head. So I'm I'm next to Zach, who's playing against somebody, and I see Marginal on the other side of like the the table of setups. Right, he's playing against this guy Jimmy the Hat. Who knows who that guy is? Apparently, he was a Ziva player, and Marginal has a face. It is the most. It is the angriest, the most visceral face <laughs> that a human being can muster. It was hilarious and also terrifying. Allie and I looked at each other and we thought, there's no point in recording the match. I wish that we had a camera on Marginal's face. Just no context, <laughs> no nothing. Just show Marginal's face. And, and he is shouting. He, he's getting angry. I'm pretty sure... By, I'm not sure if he won the match or lost, but I'm pretty sure at the end he got up no, he and he ripped Jimmy the Hat's heart out of his chest. <laughs> and started eating it. He was that angry about it. It was. He became the personification of rage. He was like, he was like mu- muttering things like, "Get out!" Yeah. Get oh, out. that he was not muttering. He was shouting at the top of his lungs. He was. He was so angry. Uh, oh man. That's man, definitely apparent, my favorite moment of Winter Brawl. He apparently afterwards he goes on. I, I don't know if it was chat or Facebook, and he just basically types, Jimmy the Hat is Satan. Is Satan. <laughs> he's, he's a very nice guy, but he is also Satan. I don't get it, though. Marginal, I've, I've never even seen him show any emotion. I know. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a very, very so quiet guy. That's, that's why I mean, this was such an important moment for me. I kind of like this. Marginal, yeah. way to go. Yeah. Getting <laughs> hype. I don't think it was hype. Well, whatever it, it was, was for everyone else watching. Yeah. Whatever it was, it allowed him to win because uh, I think he made it to losers finals of his pool before Sporko beat him. Yeah, uh, I didn't get to see that match. I'm hoping to see that once it's uploaded. And ironically um, enough, uh, Jimmy the Hat uh, has never been seen again. <laughs> Coincidence? Yeah. Uh, people found remnants of his hat. I mean, I think at this point it's inevitable. Yeah. So. Did he, wait, did he actually wear a hat though? I think he did, right? I'm not even sure. I don't remember what he looks like. Why don't we say? You have to fix the name, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh. I think we're just gonna say he wore one because (laughs) (laughs) that'd be kind of stupid. There was a guy named there was a a, one player there named Fox Boy or something like that, and he had like a hat with fox ears and all that. So he had the whole (laughs) character thing down. 
I believe Easily my favorite right. match was when I played against somebody named Pancake Mask Party. Pancake. <laughs> oh, you played against? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's who I played against. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see any matches of yours before you fought Saltface, so I had no idea. I played Scion, and then I played Pancake Mask Party. Oh, that's right. You did beat Scion. That's yeah. right. What, what was, was that, that match like? We didn't get to see that. Yeah. If I remember right. The Scion match. Yeah. No, uh, was sure. That was 3-0, I think. Yeah. Yeah, Sion doesn't do particularly well against me. Players like that don't do particularly well against me. Oh, wait, you did play, you did play Salt Face? Yes. They yeah, played Salt Face on stream, I believe. All right, now this, I want to hear this because it's my own thing. Uh, when I played Salt Face, I had now understood the reason of his name. Did you get any reaction out of him, or was he just... <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Oh. <laughs> uh, he... He gave me an incredibly firm handshake. Uh, my my hand hasn't recovered to this day, uh, but he was it, in 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 defense of him. He was very respectful towards me specifically. But the second that he the second that he lost to me, he went over to Hawkeye and whatever that uh, viewing party was, and apparently just talked about how awful I was. Oh, that's almost exactly my experience. This yeah. Show, uh, right. See, I, I would have thought. See, I would have thought that Soulface, instead of talking about how bad you were, he would have talked about how bad the game is, because that's usually what he does uh, uh, yeah. after yep. losing. From what I understand, it was specifically me, not oh. the game. Okay. Yep. Uh, I got the same. I got the same uh, ordeal. Except uh, after I beat him, he went and talked to uh, White Fox, and then talked about how bad I was. So. Yeah. I played Saltface once and in Injustice, right? And he was destroying me, and he was still salty because of the character I played. Like, I, I would touch him once and get like twenty percent after he's already got eighty percent. Like, his character is so play? cheap. I played Bane. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. he, he was, like I would touch him one time, and he is like yelling. He's about to chuck his arcade stick. Like, wow. <laughs> about Paul I mean, Sanford. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, he he gets salty. Like it's even more so in Street Fighter. Like he. Oh God. Well, at least his name I... is appropriate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no one liked the Carrot Top match. I thought that was amazing. Uh, Carrot Top and who? Bibulous. Uh, yes. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, Carrot Top was the viola. Viola. Okay. All I remember about that match was a lot of Pira 2-2-B. All I remember was, uh, I think, didn't they say preemptively that this guy would play on Xbox, but he didn't have a controller or something? Or is that somebody else? No, no. that was somebody named Vaughn. That oh, you're talking who was, about. Who was Vaughn using? That's the guy in uh, our Facebook group. Vaughn? Devon, played, Devon something. Uh, who the hell does he play? Uh, I want to say he played Cervantes, but I'm not sure. Oh, is that the guy His, that Cab went in on? Like, <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, I, who did Cab go in on? Some guy posted about how he had to borrow a controller. That's him. Yeah, and Cab, <laughs> Baby, that could have been that like, guy. You don't get to use excuses when you yeah. go to a tournament. Like, yeah, Cab, I think misread. Oh, that, that right, because he he's the one that said something like he didn't know you were allowed to bring your own controller or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, it's like, well, how do you really know? If it, I mean, but still, it's kind of funny. Yeah. I didn't read it as an excuse. The guy is, it's his first <laughs> tournament. He had no idea. Yeah, I'm tr I don't even, how did I play my first tournament? Oh, I didn't bring a pad. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I but, did. Either. <laughs> Think of it. But, uh, yeah, so I guess in the, along the same vein, um, since we mentioned salt, salt face, an interesting discussion. Uh, was taking place some time ago, a little bit before Winter Brawl, concerning uh, taunts mid-match and pop-offs <laughs> at the end of a match. <laughs> so, and I, I know uh, me and Jay have had this discussion before about pop-offs, but because he's here, I figured it was appropriate to do this topic with him on board. So, pretty much... Uh, Whoever wants to jump in first, what are your feelings on both taunting and pop-offs? Um, before we talk about this, did you guys see Poke Chop play Real Law in Tekken? Oh, boy. I, no, no, I didn't, actually. Uh, I didn't see it. That's I something you Real must Law watch for yourself. Super Salt. They played this first to five, and Poke Chop was, like, yelling the entire match. 
Like, don't do this. Don't get up. Don't block. <laughs> he was commentating his mash pretty much. Yeah, like the mm. entire time, he was just yelling. Ah, like, ah, ah. Like if Eddie, Mur- if Eddie Murphy played fighting games, it probably looked like that. Um. <laughs> Bookshop has wow. been uh, a player for quite some time. This is this would not be the first time he's done something like that. I didn't see that specific first of five, but I've seen videos of him doing something very similar. Oh, okay. I'd have to, I, I don't really haven't really seen too many Porkchop videos, so look up the one against uh, him and fighting GM. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one where he got fought like ten million times. I think the title of the video is "Fighting GM Gets Peed On." Yeah, he like when, <laughs> when in effect he didn't physically get peed on, but you know, just metaphorically. No, I know. What you, <laughs> I, know what I think I think the fact that you had to explain that says very little about Pokeshop's character. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but the, I will look that up when this is. That's the ATL crew. Like, do you remember when M- MLG was going on? Or maybe this? Maybe that was just Tekken at that time. Yeah. They were notorious because they would go to the MLG events and they were super loud, you know, like completely yeah, like, distracting, like the loudest boy. crowd by far. <laughs> just ta- yeah. just talking to stuff. I don't really mind it. I mean, to some extent, it can't be like deafening, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you're okay with cra- like the people behind you, like around you talking, but. Oh, yeah. Uh, just not the person that you're playing against. Even then, I mean, what can I do? I, I, if that's what they uh, want. Right. But I'm just saying, like, how you, like, what are your thoughts on it in general? I probably would, I'd probably be fine with it. I guess because I'm okay. used to it. I mean, I've played a lot of tournaments, but it just win, you know, like, just win. Right. And it, all, you, all you're going to need to do is stare back at them after that. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's cold, you know what I mean? Like, they can talk, but if they can't get in your head just talking, it's, it's going to be trouble <laughs> for them. Right. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. Uh, which one? Uh, the cool see showing the video, or you're showing a gif of oh, that uh, yeah. particular port job match. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but I guess back to the topic at hand, uh, the basically what you said it was um how we feel about taunting uh, mid game and uh pop offs. Yeah. Or. But no, isn't the nope. isn't the, uh, the topic we were gonna go to now? That's what we were uh, talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what we're talking about now. Yeah. Oh, I thought we, I, I didn't realize we transitioned yet. Yeah, I thought we were still talking a little bit about poke job and whatnot. Well, I mean, he kind of fit into the. Uh, that's history. true. Yeah, because yeah, he, he did pop off. Yeah, pop off every every everybody every round every every <laughs> match. So. <laughs> yeah. For me personally, I think the pop off stuff is hilarious. I love all I love all that stuff. <laughs> like, I wish that at NEC they would have covered more of Party Wolf in his uh, Captain America outfit and just the crowd reactions and stuff. Because I went back and watched the video a little bit. I don't think they streamed hardly any of that. And I just, th- that stuff is just the best. I think that makes yeah. the tournament <laughs> so much more fun. I mean, the, the game, yeah, it gets intense just when you know um, how deep some of the players are playing, but in some, if we were just like robots, just staring at the screen, you got to admit it's going to be a little less entertaining, maybe a lot less. I like people showing emotion. Well, maybe, maybe. In my, I mean, I mean that's maybe not I robots, think. but yeah. Well, I, it's just that physically, you don't have to do a lot in this game, right? You just move your hands around, you kind of just stare, the, stand, sit there, staring right. at the screen. It's not like a sport where you can see the motion. You can't see the wheels turning some inside someone's head in this game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Pop uh, offs. I love it. But taunts, though. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't love it. Oh, okay. <laughs> taunts during the match, I think, is good. Like in a round. When you're still alive, even even after that, and in a tournament match, anything goes. As far as I'm concerned, any button you can press, anything you can do. Right. But just taunting someone just to like annoy them or depress them outside of the game, just to gloat, I just think is pretty shitty thing to do. As a, just be a sore winner, in my opinion. I mean, if you don't gain anything from it except to make someone else just feel bad, it's not great. 
Now, granted, some people really deserve it. Like, you talk a lot of shit, and then someone is playing you, better believe they're probably going to taunt you. And you can't say you didn't earn it. <laughs> but just your average person, there's no real reason to, like, disrespect people for no reason. And that's that's what I see it as. My opinion. Okay. But I'm not talking about stuff like Tira doing taunts to stance transition or something yeah, like right. that. Tira, Tira is, has a use, right? Right. And I don't consider overkill a taunt either. I mean, a lot of that stuff is just practice your moves or test the lag or just keep your hands warm. That's, you say, I mean, uh, that's what I use it for. Would you say the Blue Boy special would be him just getting his hands warm? <laughs> no, and that's an interesting thing, but... Just give him the patties. I mean, well, again, I mean, in that case... Yeah. It's uh, the meaning, case, though. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, in the case of overkill... What the hell? Oh. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the case of overkill, uh, if anything, that just draws out more time for the next round. So maybe you might have been on a really bad momentum, you know, downward spiral, and you get a time, you get a chance to collect yourself and and rethink uh, what you're going to do the next round. Um, and I think that, if anything, would help me to get more time to figure things out. Um, while he's overkilling me, so I don't even really pay much attention. Yeah, it's true. You can extend the time be- between you have to play the next round. Yeah, or you can have it extended against you. I mean, there's nothing. That's what's in the game. So, right. Um. All right. So, what about you, Jay? Uh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate all of it. It does. <laughs> yeah. People who know me know that it does not take much to bother me, uh, but especially uh, with pop offs after after you've won, I find that because I've been in that situation a lot where I uh, I've lost a match that I really wish that I had won, and I know that my opponent feels the same way. I wouldn't want them to do it to me, so I don't do it to them. Uh, but right. yeah, it does not take much to bother me with a variety of different ways of showing off. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, um, I guess end I'll of go. discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, end of discussion. Right, no, um, I guess I'll go on this. Uh, taunting never really gets to me that, mu- n- that much. Usually, uh, if, Usually, if I either see like them taunt like mid game or something that I I'm still focused ahead. I'm just like, all right, go, go for your head to go go ahead. I'm just gonna probably prove you wrong and take the round. So, and then I'll continue playing from there. Um, now pop offs, pop offs. I would say distract me probably a lot because during the entire time, uh, Poke Chop was playing. I if I was playing him, I could probably never con- contain my laughter because I don't know. Like you can, yeah. you can it would, like if you're looking next to me and like. Um, <laughs> Joke around me, I'll 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 start cracking up immediately, and you'll get me off my get off my A game, because I think my first time like seriously when I actually played a KDZ at CEO, he was he was making all these funny remarks next to me, and here I'm just cracking up and just pretty much messing up the entire time. And I still won, but it was just <laughs> it was just me pretty much having too much fun versus actually realizing that oh this is actually competitive. I should probably be winning instead of having a good time. But even though I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, I mean, it's distracting, but it, like, give you ways to, like, just, I guess, sound that out, like, bring music, or just really try ahead and just ignore the guy. Uh, use that, if, if that's if that's an issue for you, so. But for <laughs> me, I guess I would be distracted, but, I, and overall, it wouldn't really bug me too much. Yeah, uh, speaking of KDZ, that reminds me of uh, one of the Jaxal Domes in Soul Calibur 4. Uh, it was him, he was playing against uh, Malice, and... At this point, this was at one of the points where KDZ was pretty, still pretty good at the game. And Malice, you know, he's never really put that kind of time into the game to be good. So Malice gets like a very quick first game. And the people that are watching are pretty hyped because they might see KDZ lose. And so KDZ does exactly what you said. He just starts commentating his own match like, oh, stop stepping there. And, you know, all this stuff <laughs> while he's hitting him. And they're just, you know, Malice is drunk, so he's having fun or whatever. And Malice gets to the point where he's like nearly one hit away, and KDZ makes this ridiculous comeback. And his final words were, "Oh no, Malice, don't let it end like this!" And he just throws him <laughs> out the ring with Siegfried's uh, 
Siegfried's low grab. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, KDZ is known for that kind of shit. So uh, that's pretty. Plus, funny. I mean, to me, not not for when someone wins a really tight match, yeah, the other person's not going to feel the greatest about it. But if they get up excited, at least you know they were into it. You know, like it wasn't just a walk in the park. Right. They were tense that, too. Yep. Like they can't contain their excitement. Even it's not. I don't. I don't view it as necessarily disrespectful. Like they're excited to have beaten me. That's good enough for yes. me, I guess. That's exactly how I feel about it too. If that if they're toning you or if they're popping off, that is one of the biggest compliments that your opponent can give you without necessarily just coming up and saying you did really well or that was hard. Because let's face it, a lot of people with that kind of ego, they're not going to admit that kind of thing. But you see it in how they play. You see it when they when they like have to exhale every round or, or like when they're just really tense when they're playing or when they let out that, you know, whatever, that woo or whatever they do when they win. It's like they really weren't sure that they were going to get it and they got it. So that's why they were excited. If you were just some random scrub that they could run over, they just shake your hand, say good games and walk off like it just never happened. But in order to get that kind of emotion out of them, you had to have presented a challenge to some degree. And you, you're already salty because you lost, but that is like them saying, wow, that was tough. That's how I see it anyway. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Woo. Uh, uh, McGee, I guess. You, you go ahead, man. Yeah, I like pop-offs. Um, I... I think you need to be careful when you pop off because, you know, you don't want to get hit with uh, what are you standing up for, like, you know. Oh, oh yeah, no, no. popping off too soon, yeah. yeah like, you, you need to, if you're going to pop off, you need to make sure you've won. Like, let, let the cinematics finish before you get up. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh, there, there's a famous, uh, pretty famous video of Street Fighter where that happened. Um, and it was this guy, it was like back in Vanilla, uh, I want to say the guy's name is Leston or, or Liston or something like that, but it was a Sagat versus Viper, and the guy playing Viper, like, everyone in the crowd was popping off. He stood up, dropped his sticks, and was, like, celebrating, and for some reason, his punish whiffed, his uh, his ultra whiffed, and the guy playing Sagat just beat him before he could sit down to play again. <laughs> so it was just like, you see Oh, I saw that match, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you see half the room. You see half the room going nuts when they think that the guy won, and then the other half goes nuts when he loses because the the random random whiffing. <laughs> uh, like, there was this one, is what happens when you pop off too soon. There was one match in Marvel. I think it was a. Uh, I think it was Noel Brown or somebody, and mm, they like were beating this guy, and they just got up and walked away because there was like so much health left that it was impossible. And then punched somebody else in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I remember that match. It was no, not that match. Like there was just oh, too okay. much health left for that guy to kill him, and then the guy manages to come back. Like <laughs> Marvel comeback. So he just like gave away that match. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was Noah. Yeah, I remember that match now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it was it was it Noel that came back or was it No Noel, Noel like It was like, Noel that walked off. He was oh. like, There's no way he can come back. Dante does no damage. And so he walked away and started <laughs> celebrating and then he came back and he was salty. Like ah. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man. Only Noel. Only Noel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so um I guess that's uh, pretty much all we need to go through with the pop-offs. I will say, uh, going back to what Jay mentioned earlier with my run in Losers, um, when I played Ring Out, this, right after I lost to Sane, I had to face Ring Out. <clears throat> and the thing with me that uh, has, I guess, plagued me for the last uh, several months of tournaments is that, for some reason, if I get beat, uh, worse than I feel like I should, and I have to play immediately after, it takes me too long to snap back into things. And usually people like Wind uh, can scoop up the pieces after, <laughs> like, at, at TFC. 
Um, but this was one of those situations where I lost a sane and I just felt like I couldn't believe it. And I was angry. And then before I knew it, it was 2-0 uh, in Ringout's favor. And I, I just couldn't. I was like, this is not happening again. I am not fucking losing this these pools like this. And from then on, it was just straight. Just, I won three straight there. I beat the next guy I played 3-0. I beat Sandman 3-0. And it was just this run of wins. Run the train. And, um, yeah. And that was the angriest I think I've ever gotten playing Soul Calibur. And I know you guys, I mean, you know me through this, but you don't know me like on a regular weekly like basis. But that's really a big deal for me because I usually try to stay calm as much as possible. Um, but maybe this is a maybe this is a sign. Maybe I have to get mad <laughs> to uh, get yeah. better. I don't know. <laughs> there was Weird literal thing. steam coming out of his ears. <laughs> yeah, it's like we I, we talked about it a week or two or two ago on one of those. Like, what does it take people to get mad or calm? Or it's hard to say what it, what clicks for certain people. Yeah, I, I remember that. We were wait, 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 remember we talked about that. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not something I can just you know trigger. You had a moment's notice, but uh, it was just that that's just how it was. And I wish I, I, when these videos get uploaded, you might even be able to see it in just the difference in how I'm playing. Um, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I couldn't really draw that up when I was playing cross because, you know, we played so many times and whatever. I actually was kind of surprised that he did beat me. Um, Bubbles. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, that like, was bullshit. bullshit. <laughs> that was fucking bullshit. That made all the bubbles. That was. It was like, awesome on stream though. He had one round where he had like four bubbles off in the pirate ship yeah. corner. It was like this <laughs> wall of bubbles. It was very well placed. Yeah. Uh, um. So, somebody, I, I forget who it was. I was talking to somebody afterwards about how that, that match was, and they were like, "I don't know if any of you guys have watched pro wrestling in the past at any point." Um, but it, it was like that one match that's like you have all the regular, you have everyone else just has a regular plain old match, and this was like that weird gimmicky, oh. like character based match. It was like this is that one match on top eight that it was like, oh, there's bubbles everywhere. It's Leisha versus the final boss. It's like you know, it's that, whole, that whole visual of him just walking around with bubbles all around him, <laughs> just running at me. It's like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, I'm glad it was a good match, even though I lost and I thought I should have placed higher. But you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, but props to Cross. He probably won't even listen to this. But you know, good shit to him, and good shit to Sane too. Yeah. And like, like you said, I mean, you started to play better after that. Sometimes that ha I've seen that happen for a lot of people where they go in and they're they're playing okay and winners, and once they lose a match, then they're like, okay, well. I can, they can breathe a sigh of relief, and then they play more like their natural game. I don't know. Sometimes people just gotta lose that one, and you'd be surprised that the pressure's off in a way. Yeah. I don't know why, but I've definitely seen that happen a lot. Now, I used to tell you know one of my friends who would he get nervous every tournament. I'm like, all right, well if you're nervous now, you know you're probably gonna lose because that's what's happened both. So let's just just pretend you've already lost then, because what's the rest of these matches gonna matter? You're just here to play games, so just See, forget about the I feel, I, I feel much more comfortable being in winners than losers. Because yeah, there, the there, there's a, I mean, aside from the obvious, um, there's a certain, uh, you know that even if you lose this, you can st you're not out yet, and there's a certain. Um, cushion i guess that that kind of provides like you you still want to win sure but it's not this is it you're against the wall now you know so i'm not quite as nervous at that point for me it's a matter of zach you talked about this where the immediacy from losing your game in winners to playing your first match in losers i need a certain amount of time in between or else I simply can't get... I'm still thinking about that loss, and I haven't even started really playing this match that I'm currently playing. Uh, which right. is probably one of the weaker parts of, of my game. That happened to me uh, too many seasons ago, where I had like a really close match against LP, and there was a point where I really thought that I was going to win it. 
I end up losing, and it must have been 10 seconds before somebody came up and said, all right, you have to play Blue Boy, uh, like, right now. And uh, Blue Boy ended up annihilating me. And uh, that's the only reason why he beat me. <laughs> that's great. Okay. <laughs> well, to be fair, this was before Blue Boy became... Blue God. Blue God. Blue God. Um, this is when he was still not top 16-ing. Yeah. Before he retired, so. people. <clears throat> Were yeah, we ever yeah. so young? It was a simpler time back then. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. You have no idea how many times he references this. How many times? <laughs> I'm not even going to try to count. Man, you can't even come up with a goddamn number. <laughs> no, I can't. I don't want to. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I guess... Are we, are we still on that topic, or are we going to move on to another one, I guess? You can move on if you want. Uh, uh, Alright, what's next? How much time we got left? Uh, um, I think we've only been going for about 30 minutes, maybe 40. Okay. Yeah, we got a lot of time, so I guess uh, I don't have it pulled up, but uh, what is next um, topic? This isn't on the topic list, but we should talk about how the cosplay contest was rigged. Uh, um, oh, well, I, don't know well, I didn't see this, so... Yeah. Apparently, Janity did not win, which means there were shenanigans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I remember him saying that it was some girl dressed as Morgan that won, but then what? apparently there was two Morgans, so I don't know. <laughs> I remember I don't him know telling I... me that it, it was a girl that he had beaten in a cosplay contest before. <laughs> yeah, in that's right. Previous competitions. Right, because she dressed up as like the Cammy. Cammy uh, Bison. Yeah, yeah. Cammy Bison. Before, Kaisen. Could you imagine how salty she was? Like she spent all that time making that costume, and then this guy who has like the a hot twenty dollar hot dog costume he got from Party City <laughs> wins. Oh, that's yeah. Oh, that's the saltiest. That is. <laughs> that's when that hard work is just like, like yeah, fuck that. We got a cosplay is more than than about the costume. It's about the attitude that you bring with it. <laughs> That's why that's why Johnny so, wins all the time. And, and in life, not just in cosplay. How right. do you act like a hot dog? It man, if I have to explain it to you, then you are not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I mean you're clearly not in any position to win a cosplay contest if you have to ask this question. You're oh. clearly not in a position to be a hot dog, I think. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, um, to be honest, I really don't care about the cosplay contest. Like, if I can see it, great. But I, why do I have to vote on it? Just stand in front of, <laughs> stand in front of something. Let me look at you, and then just go on about, you know. Let a bunch of creepy guys look, look at you, <laughs> leer at you, <laughs> leer a few seconds. I mean, what is it? I mean, what is the prize? Like a free something? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm just surprised who these goes things, to those things. And actually, these things happen at every tournament, and I still have no idea what it is. Like that's how little interest. <laughs> yeah, the tournament ones I, I don't really get. Uh, anime conventions have cosplay contests that are huge. I mean, oh, sure. Anime sure. Yeah. Uh, and those, some of them are incredibly impressive. I haven't yeah. been to an anime convention in um, a number of years, but when I used to go, uh, that was definitely one of the highlights. The ones at the tournament. It's it's a smaller thing than the tournament, and the people who are cosplaying demonstrate that. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. it's not it's not that big of a deal, and the people who are there are not acting like it's a big deal. I got you. There was a jury there that was all right. That's I true. I remember she, that. I probably thought she would have won if I wasn't already assuming John Nitty was going to win. Minnesota's yeah. the prize was like a thousand dollars. What? What the wow! Fuck? What? That can't be true. That's more than the tournament. More than the tournament. <laughs> more than our game. No. <laughs> is it really a thousand dollars? No, I think Menace is making that up. Yeah, I, I gotta doubt to, that. I might have to take back what I said if it's a thousand dollars. Kimmy John would, John would actually put real interest into that. 
Well, then you would have thought that John Nitty would have made a mention of winning $1,000 for $20. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's it the long really con. For him. John Nitty doesn't want anybody else to get really interested in the cosplay contest, so he, he uses this ratty hot dog suit. <laughs> it's like, I'll, I'll just use my reputation to like get me the, the win. Nobody knows that I'm, I'm fucking raking it right now. <laughs> Wow, Real interest that hot dog suit is actually made out of solid gold. <laughs> <Been mustard. laughs> mustard. Yeah, he just tells everybody it's mustard. <laughs> solid fucking gold. Oh, man. Well, uh, how did we even right. get on the cosplay thing? Who, who started that? I don't know, but I'm sad. The gay, damn it. I blame the gay. I blame the gay. I blame the thoughts. <laughs> Like hot yeah. All right. Well, um, since we're on that topic, I guess we might as well. Since uh, I don't know if it was McGee or, or, or Fusion that brought it up, best beard in the community. <laughs> well, I mean, you skipped the one I brought up and went straight to best beard. Well, we were you talking mean, about cosplay. Best I don't beard segue better. What are the other options? <laughs> um, I guess the other options are probably Bibulous, um, oh, yeah. Menace, uh -huh. and does Sandman have a beard? I know he used to have like, really. a, a caveman no, beard. Doesn't. He used to have a caveman <laughs> beard. Maybe I'm rid of it. Um, so. <laughs> Alright, well I guess I guess I have to abstain. Um, no. You, you will get 1.5 voting power because you're the champ. Okay. Okay, so... What do you guys Best think? beard. Best beard. Best. I'm gonna go with Menace because he looks the most like a terrorist. You oh. dumb idiot. Oh. <laughs> he just goes there. Love it. Oh. Straight to there. I mean, if we were doing oh. it on who looks the most like an Amish person, JJ, oh. he would win. <laughs> I have a that. Actually, Wait. actually, that's a good point. Somebody brought up Eris. Since when is it a good point? What are you talking about? <laughs> Eris is fucking haggard, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, he's like Doran from The Hobbit. Like, <laughs> I don't know, Jay. You think uh, you think Eris might be competition? No. Count, <laughs> Eris got retired by Cedric a long time ago. Oh really? Did you guys, did you guys yeah. know that I belong to a beer club? <laughs> That's actually true. Oh wow! Yeah, the Billy Beer Club. No, oh, for real though. Eris was retired by uh, Cernian or Cedric's Hilda in SC4. Literally was like, that's it, I'm done. Never played again. <laughs> after after one tournament. Uh, he played SC5 a little bit in the beginning. He played uh, like yeah. Evo. No, I think that was it. Yeah, I mean he had a, he was a, he made a couple of I mean obviously like SoCal regionals and that kind of stuff. Um well, he oh, had no. that uh, stream at uh, Super Arcade every Sunday or so. Oh, wait, uh, Insignia? Yeah, yeah, Insignia yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah. Who was that one guy? Um, oh, man. That, that, that was there, like, it was a regular there, and he was, like, really, really good in the beginning of SC5. I can't remember his name. Shit. Tomahawk? No. Um, oh, what was that guy's name? He played, like, Servi, but he played, like, a bunch of other characters, too. Uh, mainly SP Servi. Man? No. Ugh. Not SP man. Okay. I hate being this guy, but I, I, you guys go ahead. I'll I'll see if I can remember the guy's name. Okay. The, the, the guy oh, that, no face, no face. Yeah, that's it. That's no it. Yeah, yeah, that guy. The the guy that Alex like popped off on. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah, that right. Guy. He like walked around the. Stage. I remember no face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember no face for Ivy. That's why I was I was confused for a second. Oh right, he played Ivy in SC four, right? And then five too. Yeah. And well, he, I remember playing him in his Servi in SC5. Played mostly Servi by the time he stopped playing, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. The only thing I remember about No Face Killer is there was some stream where he was eating in the background, and the chat was going off like "No Food Killer." <laughs> <laughs> There's endless man. puns you can make on his name. Yeah. Speaking of him, um, oddly enough, for some reason, I think he, like, he actually like said something in like the final round, like. Uh, thread on eight way about how basically like you said like oh there's only six registrations what the heck is wrong i'm like when have you been relevant to this and yeah, oh, what's wrong if i'm asking time? why there's only six people yeah i never understood why, are you, like, why do you care what are you, what? what are you talking about what happened 
Uh, on the on the, on the it was six or eight, eight way. There's a right. yeah. You know how you can like you can literally just say yes or no, and he literally thought that would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, apparently he he commented and he's like, I can't believe there's only six. I'm like, I, at first I was wondering like, why do you care exactly? Because I've never even heard I never like ever heard of him since 2012. So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, people shouldn't take should never take the RSVP thing seriously. That's never an accurate. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Of who's actually going to be there. Yeah, people should take it as seriously <laughs> as Cool C. McGee saying that I did not have the best beard. They should cool. take it as non-seriously as humanly possible. You know who else has a good beard? Fuko has a Heisenberg beard. So What? That's not a... What are you guys talking about? This I, is... Uh, what? I'm Don't. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> JJJ, everybody. I hate you guys. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm kind of worried he's actually gonna leave. Like, nah, he's not. Gonna leave. Oh, I'm not Zach. <laughs> Zach, please. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, your fault, yeah. Zach. <laughs> Damn. Would All you right. say that there is someone uh, better than better than your beard in your club, uh, JJJ? In my club, yes. Oh, competition. I mean, those guys. No, no, no. This is like, you guys know, like, like there's legitimate like beard competitions and stuff. Yeah. Seriously? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you can look the stuff up. These guys like straight up compete. There's like certain lengths. There's certain styles that you can make. These oh, guys, goodness. these guys are ridiculous. There's like, actually ridiculous. some guy. I, I don't know if it's from the same club or, or competition that he's talking about, but there was a guy that had a beard so long he fastened it into a tie. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, yeah, they do, like, crazy shit like that. With there their... are some crazy beards. Like, someone, this guy posted, like, an album on Reddit of, like, different things he did with his beard. Like, one was where he turned it into a bowl for ramen. What is going on over there, Wind? What is happening to you? I'm just getting kind You're of, like, like I'm just, like, imagining these things. And then slowly, I, I just, oh, I should stop picturing this stuff. <laughs> They didn't say he was eating it. They just said it was shaped into a bowl. Hey, you don't know. You don't know. This is this is Reddit. This is this where is any right. man exists. All right. Well, but let's get away from Reddit because that's never a good place to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the thing going back to Winter Brawl. Um, after you won, and we had this conversation before, uh, where. I always felt like, and I guess you uh, feel the same way, Jay, where we kind of have the same, like, sort of in the same level uh, in terms of ability, but one of the things I was asking was how uh, you seem to make that jump from just outside uh, what pe most people consider the top level to, you know, getting involved with that, the top level area. And you basically, like many people, uh, the first the first uh, answer is for me to change characters. Um, yeah. And while I understand that, uh, I guess what I'm leading to is this question: where how uh, pick when when considering choosing characters, what is it that draws you? to the character that you play and this is for pretty much everybody not just jay um and do you think that people should care should pick a character to fit their play style or just immediately jump to the best character or use other characters to fix holes in their game uh i would say yes to the first two um okay. there is a matter like i i think for for me I, even if there's a low tier character that I think is particularly stylish, I don't really think it matters because they're low tier, and chances are I'm not going to get to see that style anyway. Do, do you know what I mean? Like they're just going to get beat up by higher tier characters. Uh, mm. Meanwhile, higher tier characters yeah. are able to play their game a lot better. So for me, I always take the top range and pick my favorite character amongst them. When it comes to a style, I mean, mix up heavy characters are basically. In 3D games, mix of heavy characters are the ones that I that I tend to gravitate towards. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. 
But you, I mean, you started off with Ezio, and so yeah, that was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't say that Ezio is exactly a mix-up, like a straight-up fifty-fifty character. Yeah, uh, like Amy in Soul Calibur Four, or like Mitsu in Soul Calibur Five. So yeah. there must have been something else that drew you to Ezio before you switched. He had a goddamn gun. <laughs> I wanted to, sh- I w- I wanted okay, to shoot people. Enough. Yeah, I wanted to shoot people in the face. That's what I saw in the trailer. And then the thing that kept me playing him for like a few months was the fact that his a grab, which is just like two body blows. Uh, sometimes if you end the round with it, the second body blow literally it has that armor piercing, like the breaking of the armor. So you were literally punching people's shirts off. And I uh. thought I can't, I can't pass this up. Well, see, it's not just about the mix-up, then. There is some aesthetic uh, value you place in characters. Uh, well, there, yeah. is a, there is a certain amount, but eventually I had to... That was back when the tier list was very much not well-defined. I was trying to champion the idea that Ezio was a very good character, and now, if you were to ask me, I would say he's arguably bottom five. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's just... He just... I don't know if you guys want to, like, start tangentially talking about this, but, I mean, Ezio, he's just... He's just too fair. Like he, he doesn't have a lot yeah. of like cheap stuff in a world right. of really cheap stuff. Yep, I feel the same way about Laisha. Uh, just extremely even if she had damage. Way. By the way, I'm sending a link to the Philly Beer Club so you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> now it's okay. Um, I guess I'll go. Uh, when it comes to picking your character, uh, it's going through a lot of things. Like, guess when you pick your character, uh. I also want to say, like, at least the first thing I want to say, like, how I picked mine was just basically due to aesthetics and just basically it's like, I like this character. Like, for me, I feel like I would probably be one of those characters, I mean, one, of those characters one of those people, basically, uh, who are, would be extremely stubborn and basically about, like, who I'd pick. Let's say if uh, I didn't pick Mitsu, let's say I picked, like, someone extremely ter- terrible, like Dan Pierre. And, but I feel like I would probably would stick with him th- th- thin and through just because of my dedication towards, like, a character I, and whatnot. But, uh, if you're more looking at, let's say, if you're picking up a game for, let's say, like, you want to win, then yes, you should pick a high-tier character. Uh, or and probably look in, once again, they look off, like, what you think is, like, to say if you're really aggressive, you probably want to pick someone like Pat. And if you're really defensive, you probably want to pick someone like, uh, I don't know, um, Pierre, I, I would say that for that case. Uh, well, there's many ways to pick your character, but uh, for the main part, I feel like that the main thing is when you pick a character is that you should at least, uh, if this makes sense, you should enjoy playing your character. Because I've seen things where people yeah. have, uh, will play <clears throat> characters and they'll just straight up hate it. They will just yeah. uh, playing the character in this. It's like, well, it's like I'm not having fun. But, and it's like, you ask them, it's like, why are you doing this? And they'll probably, they'll probably, they'll probably, they'll probably just like shrug you up and say, like, I don't know, because they're probably either in for the money or just like, I don't know, they're just playing it. Because I think... Um, I think Ricky Ortiz is a, is a good example of this, but I think that's only based off game. But I think he plays a certain thing in uh, Marvel that he just despises. But uh, he that's, doesn't play Marvel. I didn't, didn't, you told me he, he told me he hates that he hates playing it. But I, I'm trying to use, I'm trying to give a decent example. There's a lot of West Coast players that like will play it in tournament, but they don't actually practice it, nor do they really like the game. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, but as yeah. like, I, but the main thing is just. Pick a character you enjoy playing. That's that would be my sound advice. Okay. If, if it's all right for me to to kind of go off of what he was talking about for just a second, um, it really depends. For, for me, it depends on how serious, in terms of a competitive nature, that I'm going to be taking the game. Yeah. Um, if it is, hey, it's okay. Um, if it is a game that I'm really going to be taking seriously, there's been a ton of times where I've taken a I played a mid-tier character initially, but then I started going to tournaments and I switched it up, and I went to a more powerful character. Uh, Smash was the very first time that that happened. And, uh, but at the same time, I played Faust in Guilty Gear. I had no intentions of ever actually playing Guilty Gear in a tournament setting, so I might as well just play whoever I want to play. Right. Yeah. Uh, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I mean, to me, you should, I think you should at least have a, a, some sort of like tier threshold. Like, don't... You can pick a bunch... There's a lot of different characters you could win with. But don't pick... You know, stick with the worst possible character in the game trying to prove something unless that's what you want to do. I mean, ultimately, it's yeah, up to you. I just don't... I that's just what think, I don't get. Yeah, I don't get it. 
That's the uh, oofmatic. I don't understand. <laughs> well, he I mean, wants Dan- to win for like other other reasons. Clearly. Yeah, that's why I think Dampier was a really good example that yeah. we made because I think Dampier never should have been in the game, but that's me. You don't like Dampier? <laughs> no. No. For the idea for a DLC character out of the things they could have picked, I think Dampier was probably the worst thing they could have. They should have, you know, just put up. <laughs> no, I, it's I'm just kind of biased because it's like after all the hype of waiting for characters from Soul Calibur 4 to come back and you finally get DLC and it's this guy. It's like, get the fuck, you know? <laughs> yeah. like, Isn't he only Broken I, Destiny? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, who voted that? But whatever, he's in there. <laughs> um, to this day, I still don't I still don't own Damp here. Never played him once. Yeah, neither have I. Never will. No. I mean, in general... <laughs> I don't. It's kind of a side topic, but I don't really like joke or guest characters stuff like that. Yeah, like, I'm not really a big fan of them either. I reject. I mean, I kind of reject all the Star Wars bullshit that they put in. It's just a ploy to get people that don't play the game to buy the game, and getting and playing it like tournament level. I think is just silly. It's. Yeah. I don't know. But that, think, anyway, that's but a whole other side. I think game. Ezio fits really well for a guest Ezio, character. Yeah, Ezio, Ezio I was just going to say that well, yeah. Ezio fits really well. Ezio is like about as far along that border as I'm willing to go. I can accept Ezio. Um, I want to probably say this, but uh, I guess like for a thing about DLC characters is, I would almost want to say I want. I mean, like I guess whatever they're placed on tier wise is tier wise, but like I don't want to say Dampier is not usable, but I mean he, you he really isn't. I mean I'm sorry, the, the character you are literally, you are guessing so hard just to he, get damage yeah, he, with that character. <laughs> I, I would agree. He's he, he's one of two characters in the entire game that I would not. Uh, I would stress don't play. He he's all gimmicks, and then half of the time your gimmicks don't even work. Cause exactly. Like, at least make them usable. I mean, like when you add these characters, like like I said, Ezio is probably the best there is because he's usable. It, there's people who've shown that he's he can be used at a high pro at, at a a competitive scene. So I'm like, it, it, he's a great example. But just Dan Pierre, it's like, no, this is just. Hardcore guessing. It's like you're you're literally just going. They're just going for the biggest YOLO you possibly can with this character. Hoping your RNG works. <laughs> <laughs> My RNG. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest issue I have, even if I liked Dampier as a character, there's just something that bothers me about you already having to do enough guessing with mind games and reading and mix-ups, but now you have the game fighting against you as well. And it's like if you just have a really shitty day where all of his luck-based moves just aren't in your favor, it's like, at this point, what do you... If you're not just playing to have fun, why are you still trying? You know? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think, as far as picking a character, my thing is... First of all, we're assuming that we don't know the tier list beforehand. We're assuming right. we don't know... You know, a month, two months in, who's all going to be top tier, who's all going to be bottom tier. And this is also assuming that there's no patches. Um, The first thing I would look for, pretty much like Jay said, is the aesthetic value with, you know, style. Um, But after that, once I've decided I'm playing this character, um, there's part of me that's just like, I want to play this character because I truly believe deep down that this character can win or this character can work and then there's another part of me that says if this character does have the tools um it's almost like it's almost a sign of of just giving up when you say all right i can't do this i can't accomplish this even though i've put enough time into it i'm so close already but I'm just going to say, forget it and pick a top tier character. Not that there's anything wrong with people who do that, but for me, I, I would I would feel, <laughs> I, I would just be disgusted by the fact that I'm basically saying, this is as far as my skill can take me, now I'll let my character do the rest. Yeah, I give up. So, yeah, I you give Mitsu. up. I, I, I do all the Mitsu. I let Mitsu do all the work for me. No, I understand. Oh, pick a top tier. <laughs> um, <laughs> Life's too short. Yeah. Though life's too short for bad matchups. <laughs> yeah, it's just like when I when I play, like I don't even play uh, Ezio just just for fun anymore. Um, it's just 
uh, I find myself just getting more and more frustrated every time I play a character that is inherently not as strong as somebody else. And I'm like, well, I mean, what am I, what am I doing this for? Like, am I doing it for me? I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. And at the same time, I really you can't really fault people for playing top tier either. I mean, at worst, all you should do is just pick the same character, in my opinion. Like, there's not a lot of room to complain about people picking good characters when you yourself could. Plus, no one ever seems to agree on who's a good character anyways. So, I mean, you run into one, people at varying skill levels, and you're like, well, this is, our t- this is the top three characters, and then you talk to someone different, and it's totally different um most of the time they're just getting gimmicked by something and then they feel like well this is just overpowered well so there is definitely something to be said for like just sticking through your matchup and just really exploring what is good and what isn't i mean i mean there's that too i think but i think after a certain point there's a universal um Maybe we don't all agree on the top three or the top five, but there's a universal understanding that this group of characters is better than this group. Usually. Right. Um, Especially after a game like this, which has been out for how many years? A significant amount. Well, yeah, by now we're talking like three years into the game. So, yeah. um, But I, I just, in general, uh, you don't tend to know uh, that kind of stuff early on, so... Um, once you know, though, then it's your decision whether you're going to stick with that character or move on to a better one that might reward yeah. you better. Uh, I think you should try to play a character you like, but if your character is bad, like you, don't don't be a Micross. Don't play Honda and be mad because your character sucks. Like, just play someone I, else. Actually, Mike Ross, uh, yeah. Mike Ross that, that, that brings me to another point. Um, what if... And there's a lot of situations I've seen with this as well, where you think your character isn't as bad, isn't as good as other people think they are, and it's because you just haven't explored them fully yet, or you haven't figured out the best way to play them. Because um, there's situations yeah. like that too, where you get off to a bad start with a character, and you say this character is bad, and then later on this character's winning tournaments, and it's like, well, I just didn't figure out this was good, or that was bad, or that was good. You know. Um, would you say that'd be kind of like Pat? Because I mean, I was like, we all uh, we all had the recognition that Pat was good, but we had no idea to like later on that basically he was like that good. Because I don't know, I guess it's from my view, but I, I never I I recognized Pat being an extremely good character, but I never really found him to be that one that was he like would be completely terrifying and absolutely like dominate and do have the results like NEC where we had about three or four Pat- <laughs> Patroclus players. So Well, Pat, Pat's a special case because, first of all, I don't remember too many people playing Pat and then dropping him, um, but I think a lot of that was because before the patch, when the backstep yes. uh, thing was not nerfed, Pat really wasn't very good. Yeah, he, I mean, was, he was pretty mediocre. 6XB was not the threat that it is now because... All those times you get caught out of backstep, you would be blocking it. Oh. So he really had an issue with spacing. I mean, he still kind of has one now, but it's a lot better balance for him with 6xb catching backstep properly. Yeah, yeah. It used to be the situation where you could get hit by Pat 1K, you would be at a frame disadvantage, and Pat could be 100 percent right that you were going to backdash, and he still can't catch it. Uh, Pat had no actual way of corralling you into. In advantageous yeah. positions, so he just had like this really small range, and nobody really cared. But also, Pat was incredibly simple. Uh, so I saw a lot of people have Pat as a secondary or a tertiary, but I didn't see a lot of people maining them. I would guess that that's just because, well, you know, this guy's really simple. There's nothing I can figure out with this guy. So who really get you know? Su played him for for quite a while. Uh, Partisan played him for yeah. for quite a while, and but they all just decided, well, I mean. This character doesn't really have a whole lot. Let me try somebody else um, as somebody who I'm really going to take forward. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he yeah, he's kind of basic. Um, and I think... Uh, and that's why, like I was saying, like style and aesthetic value tends to uh, come into play there because I think the most people that play Pat now do so because he's really good and they don't have to work as hard as... as uh, at certain things, uh, certain aspects of the game. Um, so, 
you know, I mean, I, there are, I'm sure there are people that just, just love Pat as a character, but I don't run into too many of those. I don't think. I, I used to really dislike Pat, but now I like him because he has that one uh, intro line that's like, "Pick up your sword and die," <laughs> and accept your death. Yeah. yeah like that. So oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> But all right, you guys heard it here first. Zero effect. I'm gonna write this down. Zero effect thinks Blue Boy is shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it here, even though it wasn't from me. <laughs> uh, I can read between the lines. I've known Zach for a long time. <laughs> yeah, as far as this topic goes, it's pretty interesting that there's definitely a breakdown or some sort of divide between people that really just pick their character and stay with their character based on on a stylistic thing and then people who i wouldn't say are necessarily going for the highest tier but i I would fall into this camp where i just play with the move set that i like i mean i just play with the character that like honestly they could just be stick figures i'd probably still play the game yeah i enjoy it i enjoy it just for what it you know the strategy of it just the mathematics of it yeah right yeah i mean the exchange of all the different mix-ups and spacing and all that. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, even a, I mean, a technically like a low-tier character, I mean, bottom line, if you make X amount of good decisions in the match, you you still should win. I mean, you may have to make like, you know, 15 Hard or... Reads. Yeah, 15 Hard or 16 reads. really good reads. Or, and the other guy maybe only has to make like 12 or 11. I don't know, but it's not in like an impossible amount. Well, yeah, so. you either have to make a bunch of hard reads or you have to dumb the game down to such a point where you only need, like, softer reads. Or it's just, like, all poke damage or all, you know, that kind of thing where pretty much evens out the damage output of the cast if you're just making things into a poke battle at mid-range. Um, yeah. But, and another thing, like, this game, this game in particular... Uh, even though it has its share of characters that are low tier, um, it's still fairly balanced when you compare it to most of the other games yeah. out there right now. Um, so a low tier in this game isn't the same as a low tier in Street Fighter or a low tier in MK9 or a low tier in Soul Calibur 4 even. Yes. So um, yeah. just because your character has that label of being a low tier especially in Soul Calibur V, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can't win uh, the matchups they're facing. Yeah, I, that's the thing I really do enjoy about Soul Calibur, is that basically the fact that like, even, even though your character is labeled as, like you said, low tier, they have the, 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 this amazing ability of, being, of, of still winning, whereas versus, like you said, other games, where the character is just... Absolutely pissed terrible as to we almost almost like majority of the out of the Marvel cast uh, where they say they, they just can't win, but uh, that's what makes I, I just really want to say that it makes our game just really special that it's gonna, that we have that and I thoroughly enjoy that. So yeah, yeah. anyone who thinks the balance for Soul Calibur Five is bad needs to look at MK Nine because in that game, if you played like half someone on like half of the cast, you might as well not even go to the tournaments because the matchups are so bad for you. Like, Anybody here know Third Strike? Yes. Third Strike. Yes. Third, third, yeah. Where, where you have, I, I remember listening to interviews of like some of the best Chun Li players, and they say, "Yeah, I, I hate playing Chun Li, but Chun Li is so much better than all these other characters, and I'm going to a tournament that is just inundated with with this one character. I am quite literally forced, despite the fact that he is one of the best players in the world, he has to play Chun Li because." She, she's just so much better, and there are so many people playing that character. So, yeah. yeah. There, used to be a lot, there were like 9-1 matchups in that game. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, Street Fighter, I mean, I think Ultra might have uh, balanced things out a little bit more, but I remember in the earlier days of Street Fighter 4, Vanilla, and Super, there was people saying that there were like 8-2 matchups and really bad so eight eight matchups. Saying Arcade Edition was easily yeah, eight. Well, yeah, right, right, because of the Twins. Yeah. But, um, yeah. No, yeah, in, in Third Strike, uh, Chun Li could super punish a handful of moves that 12 had on hit, which on is ridiculous. Hit? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't it? 12, 12 was ridiculously awful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. I didn't even know 12 was a character in that game. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, remember 12. just because he was bad. That's the only yeah. time I ever heard him brought up in and conversation. He and he still wasn't the worst, which is crazy. Oh. Who was worse than him? Sean. Sean. <laughs> Sean, Sean was miserable. He had no mix-ups. He had no damage. He had a DP that he could be jabbed out of. He had uh, a super fireball that could be parried with one parry. <laughs> like it was miserable. Ugh. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, don't know. I didn't. I never liked Sean's design in the first place. So it's good that he's bad. <laughs> it was a, it was amazing in Second Impact. Oh yeah, see people forget that that exists. Yeah, all Strawn had to do was just like spam standing heart punch, and it would do like a fourth life of just happen to hit somebody, and it had like a hitbox that was insane. I don't know how much you guys want me to get into the history of the of their fighting games, but uh, but yeah, I the, the Soul Calibur Five is easily the most balanced fighting game I've ever played, not just competitively but like casually. I think I'd agree. Yeah. Yeah. I love this game. It's great. There's no problem. Oh, yeah. I mean, it sucks. People love it so much. Why don't you marry it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as the quality of it, it's a much better game than some people give it give credit for. Much better than Soul Calibur 4, to be honest. Yeah. 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 And I'll say this about playing low, like lower tier characters. I do think it helps sometimes in your just overall gameplay because yeah. some characters have obviously have strengths and weaknesses, and if you only ever play that to a certain extent, you kind of just get used to how to use this one godlike tool, Pat Six Six B. But when you play without, we play a character that doesn't have that but has something else. You kind of develop your game a little bit, I think, in another direction. And then when you go back to your main, you might find that you have a better set of skills. You don't have to rely on on that, which really comes in handy against players who adapt that are just like, all right, you can hit me with whatever else you want, but I'm not going to get hit by 6-6-B. And if that's all you know how to do, then you're going to have a hard time, surprisingly. Yeah, um, that's actually a really good point. Uh, because I, I feel like, main, mostly since Soul Calibur five, since I've messed around with characters like Pat and Pyrrha, um, not so a little bit, but mainly just the higher characters in the game. Um, I feel like playing a low tier character um, makes you understand the game a lot faster because you're forced to. But yeah. playing a high tier character gives you the chance to understand your opponent a lot faster because now you're not worrying about the tools, you're worrying about what your character's very the the threat of your character's options are doing to your opponent mentally and you'll see that much faster when you play a stronger character than you will a low tier um so i mean i guess it's the i mean the downside obviously to playing a low tier character is that even if you might be a better player than somebody um you still have a higher chance of just losing um based on a matchup than you would if you were playing a better character but Again, like you were saying, on the flip side, you don't just get used to abusing certain things and missing out on the bigger picture of the game itself. Right. Um, I guess we could go into counterpicking. It's kind of related to this topic. Uh, okay. Sure. Uh, all right, we can still get on time? Yeah, we're still good. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, fine. All right. All right. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Counterpicking. Uh, I'm never. I never. I don't mind it. I mean, I don't see. To be honest, I don't see any reason why it should bother anybody. Um, but I guess in most cases, if I see somebody counterpick and that's not their main, I tend to relax a little bit because it's like, even if they have a matchup advantage, you just know they're not going to be as solid. Yeah, um, I get that with too. Their secondary than they would be with their main. If anything, um, kind of tying in with the previous topic, usually whenever I would go to tournaments and I would see somebody break out a low tier, that would put me on edge. It's like, well, wait a minute, they must know some shit because nobody plays this character without really studying it. Um, So usually 
you know, counterpicks don't they don't really bother me in that sense, so Um I Shout out the same playing period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, that's an interesting thing. Um if we're gonna go on counterpicking solely for Soul Calibur five, I would highly not suggest it. Um there are chances where yes you will it will make like you'll get a game, but I usually have never seen much anything past that. At least not 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 in the few, not uh, any, anything that's been happening recently. I've seen stuff in the previ- in the past that has happened. Uh, I think I remember I watched Ramon. Uh, he kind of picked some dude with Mitsurugi and uh, end up winning, but that's an old thing, and I I'm not sure. I'm not exactly. Oh, that's sure. probably Jaxel. Yeah, I'm not sure how relevant that was or not. <laughs> yeah, but, that, uh, yeah, Jaxel was a whole other thing. But uh, I don't, for the for Soul Calibur, uh, just solely, I would just say stick with your main because, uh, like Zach says, like when you count when you when you try and counter pick or just go off to a secondary, you're not you're gonna notice they're not gonna play like they usually like they usually do with their main because with your main you feel very comfortable, you feel you feel like as you're very no, he doesn't know anything about his tools. You you're generally you play very fluently unless there's some something that's uh, differing your play, but. Uh, just for Soul Calibur, stick with, stick with your guns. Stay with stay with your main character. Yeah, there are some games Soul Calibur. I would agree it's not particularly important to counterfeit. But then I would also say I would also stipulate that there are some games where it's not just important; it's incredibly essential. Um, Street Fighter Two is the first one that comes to mind, where it's important that you basically. I mean, the game's been out for so long, but even still. Uh, it's important to know the entire cast because quite literally every character in the cast one, there is a character that that character completely dominates and two, there is a character that that character cannot beat so a lot of times a tournament set becomes just a constant you know, display of counterpicking and it's just a matter of like who wins the first game and who gets on top of the ball in that regard um, so Soul Calibur specifically again, it's not particularly important but there are games, Street Fighter especially, where it's incredibly important, I would say. Would you say yeah. it's kind of like Rock, Paper, Scissors, Shoe, I guess? Almost for that? Uh, well, I mean, blind picking kind of allows you to subserviate that, that whole area to a certain extent. Um, but it's still, it's, it's it can be pretty tough. Okay. Alright, um, so since you brought it up, explain exactly what blind pick is, because I've heard it mentioned before, I've never actually seen it done. Um. Yeah, so. Sandman actually said that uh, he had to, like, he said that he wanted to blind pick somebody at Winter Brawl, and he explained that to Allie, and Allie did not even think that it was an actual thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up thought Sandman was lying. The idea of a, a blind pick uh, is it comes, into, it, it comes into the fold when you have a situation where you have two people who play a lot of different characters, all of those characters that one guy plays totally counterpick the other person's characters and so neither one of them wants to choose their character first because then the other guy is just going to pick the counterpick, right? So the idea is you've got player A and player B. Player A goes over to an objective person, a tournament organizer or whomever uh, and says which character they're going to pick. Just tells that person who they're going to pick. Then player B chooses their character on the select screen on the character select screen and player A then chooses the character that they said that they were going to pick earlier. So essentially the characters are being picked at the exact same time without the other person knowing who is playing whom. Um, it's happened in Street Fighter 4 a handful of times. I remember Ryan Hart uh, beat Daigo essentially uh, off of a counter pick because uh, at that point Ryu had a really tough time with Dalsum and Ryan Hart had been boasting about his Dalsum the whole time so he asked for a, a blind pick and then Daigo switched to a different character that didn't lose to Dalsum, and Reinhardt just didn't choose Sim at all, and just went with Ryu, and uh, and he ended up winning off of that. Uh, so, like I said, it can be pretty important. Okay, um, I I think that I guess that's why uh, I know you weren't you didn't really play MK9, but MK9 had a feature where you could hide your cursor on the screen. Oh yeah, so, there were other Mortal Kombat's that had that too, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so. You couldn't. You could just. You could. Some people could try and figure it out by how many times they heard the clicking sound to see sure. where you could possibly be. But some people just got past that by going back and forth over the character they were playing, and so it just became this one extended five-minute character select because people just didn't want to settle on a character <laughs> to just try to psych each other out like before the match even starts. I always thought it was dumb. I figured play the character you're supposed to play and whatever, but whatever. 
it, it depends on the game. If there, it, there are some games where I think it's incredibly important, uh, where there are just certain matchups that are so frustrating and so outside of one's comfort zone that, yeah, it's important to, to do the counterpick. Soul Calibur Five, very much not that type right. of game. Right. Okay. Um, anyone else? Or... Uh, I guess uh, Vagir or uh, Fusion. You guys, have anything to really say about it? Or uh, can I pick? Uh, oh. I think we're. I think we're lucky. Yeah, that this game it's not that important because that's. I mean, I don't. I don't play two D games, but that sounds like just a total shit show. Just yeah. my main just doesn't do well against yours at a very base level, and it, I mean, I've heard that you guys aren't the first ones to say that. So I mean, I know that's a thing in the two D world, and just. It's the number one thing that kind of puts me off from wanting to learn a 2D game. Mm. I've heard other yeah. people have frustrations with it too, but uh, for me it's just, it's a different type of skill, learning a variety of different characters and uh, and understanding the meta, quote-unquote, of a of a tournament. Um, it's it's different to me, but it's not necessarily bad. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, 2D... Oh, go ahead. I think so. some people are... Are two counter pick centric. What's up? Uh oh. Uh oh. Sounds like someone uh went in on Some the people game. are too counter pick centric. And the podcast. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not random battle. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, um they're too counter pick centric and you know, they're always worried about counter picking and their characters that they counter pick with may not be solid characters or they'll lose a match and think oh I need the switch when the reason they lost a match wasn't necessarily because of the character they were playing yeah that's yeah. my biggest nightmare when it comes to games like the reason why I've never counterpicked is because I would hate that moment where you you think okay I'm going to go to a counterpick now and then in the middle of the match you just realize oh man this was a big mistake <laughs> This whole yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the thing that's been precious me. Um, but what I was going to say about the 2D thing, it's also um, 2D games in general seem to be simpler to learn the concept of uh, compared to 3D games. So learning a bunch of characters is not quite as um, it, it's not quite as much work as you would try to do like Tekken or Soul Calibur or something like that. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, that kind of comes into it, too. I, I think if we all started with 2D fighters, we probably would have a much different view on on uh, character loyalty, I guess. Yeah. But I think most, most 3D fighters, you really don't have that bad of character uh, clashes like that. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would say so. But um, there's actually something that, that, that actually is brought up. I've actually thought of something, about it, but um, you said how sometimes just get a, uh, oh my goodness, I'm sorry, uh, basically they'll kind of just switch and then they'll like during the match they'll immediately think that this is like a terrible idea. I would um, don't want to use them as an example, but almost like almost as a question. When I see Sam and when I see Sam and play, he mainly play he mainly will play Viola, but then suddenly Viola is not working out. He'll go with Siegfried. Would you just what exactly? Since you guys have met him, uh, what exactly do you know why he does this? Do you know is it just because a he'll think that maybe they still don't understand Siegfried that much, or like b that uh, I guess maybe he thinks that he's a little more confident with Siegfried. I guess in a way, if this I well, can't say for sure, um, but my my guess would be from the conversations I've had with him, uh, Sandman does not like playing viola he, i mean compared to like <laughs> wow. how much he enjoys playing siegfried uh i've heard him talk about siegfried in like the warmest of ways and then the only times that i've ever heard him talk nicely about viola is just how much bullshit the character is um and so that you know he I, I feel like in his heart of hearts he wants to play siegfried but i mean i would argue that the character is like the top of bottom five and compared to the tools that Viola has, there's really no comparison. Yeah. And so he just he, he, he wants to he wants to win. And obviously a guy like me can't really blame him for that. Yeah, that's that's totally understandable. That makes a lot of sense. What do you think, Zach? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty much the same. Uh, the only thing the only time I've really ever seen him bring out Siegfried though, is against either Viola Mirrors or against another character like say Algol 
or somebody with a ton of damage. Um, and that, I, I don't know. I think Viola can handle herself in the damage part of it, but I think he just hates playing the mirror. And I think he only the only other time he ever brought him out was against Cross uh, playing Algo, and I think that's the only time he beat Cross. I'm not sure about that, but that's the last one I remember. Didn't he do that? Probably. I think at a previous at the last Winter Brawl actually, because they were Grand Finals, weren't they? Yeah, but no, that's the one that Cross beat him. Oh, yeah, um, yes, yes, yes. The time I'm talking about was I think East Coast Throwdown, oh. um, where he played Siegfried and beat uh, Cross's Algo and uh, Thermidor's Nightmare when Viola wasn't cutting it. Ah. Oh, there is one particular situation in which I remember that Sandman will specifically play Siegfried, and that's when he fights somebody from Chicago. I'm going to bet that that's because LP surely has given those people enough of experience against the character that he feels, well, there's just no point in wasting my time. Yeah. And I think he just knows Siegfried better. Like, Viola, he yeah. really doesn't know the Viola matchups. He just knows, okay, I can, I'm Viola, I can do this, 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 and this and make my opponent have to figure me out and not the other way around. But with Siegfried, you know he's he's familiar. He has He's more at home playing that character, and he understands the matchups a lot better. And you can see it when he plays. Yeah. So. All right. That does, does actually fit what I, was look, what, I was, what I was looking for. So thank you guys for giving me that. Yeah. Uh, um, any more to no really problem. say about this topic, or should we move on? I guess that's uh, it. Um, all right. I think we're at about time, so I guess we're gonna wrap it up unless you guys have something pertinent to talk about. Uh, JJJ one winner raw. <laughs> it's true, I did. JJJ that's the thing that happened. Yeah. Would you like to give anyone shoutouts or put anyone on uh, blast? Shoutouts. Uh, to me, <laughs> uh, put on blast people who. That is the end of my shoutouts. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all I got. Oh no, you just kind of like crackled out. I was like, what? Oh really? Yeah. You said all people right. who uh, hey. stop talking. I just want to say congratulations, JJJ. That was really cool to see. Um, I when you won and you just kind of sat there, the emotion. You, oh, I mean, yeah. I I could totally feel that. It, it was really cool because I think a lot of people don't realize you can play this game for a long time and <laughs> winning a major is not all. It's something you kind of forget about after you haven't won them for <laughs> forever. Yeah. Um. So it is. Yeah. It's, it was really cool to see that it meant. A lot to you, which I posted somewhere else. But and we had a, we had a good chat before the tournament started. You know about just going back, going back and forth about what we thought was going to happen, and it was just cool to see you come out on top. And you had a closer match with Sane, which I thought would happen, but even you won that too. So props to you. He went against you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's too bad that it's too bad that we didn't get to talk about that guy because I mean Sane. Man, he was really impressive, not just in the sets that I had with him in tournament, but uh, like right. Hawkeye, IRM, me, and Sane, we had a lot of casuals over the yep. course of the weekend. And it was incredible. Like, I had to develop an entire strategy uh, to beat him. Meanwhile, at NEC, I mean, it was just practically, he, he just screwed up so many times that it, it wasn't really that big of a thing. Yeah, I think yeah. The, guy, the guy's good. I think a lot of people just took his first tournament performance too seriously. Um, they just and anybody can have an off day, and I think that's what happened with him. Um, do I think he's going to be dominating? You know, by final round, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But he's definitely somebody to take seriously. And if you really don't see that, then I don't know. It's. Um, I, w I would say this this I when this tournament I definitely recognized his skill and how, and how much I guess what he's uh, now taking from his first tournament because I'm guaranteeing you he probably did think quite a bit about the first tournament and I'm pretty sure he was absolutely frustrated with the uh, certain matches at the first AC so and then at this right. one I would say he definitely surprised me because I thought I mainly I, you know, I went off on a lot of I went off a lot of bad rumors and I probably should pity myself I should really I'm not pity myself but uh should really scold myself for. You should pity yourself. <laughs> All right, I should pity myself. Yeah. All right, I, I agree with that. Uh, but no, um, 
I should really not not doubt not have doubted him, but yeah, he definitely showed his stuff and he played extremely well. And I would like I would love to see him at uh, further tournaments. He wants to go. So he'll, he'll be there as, as far as going to the final round. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that I'm not sure about. But I know Mentality. he is very excited <coughs> at the concept of going to more tournaments. Okay, that's good. Yeah. I mean, there's a tons of tournaments around the Northeast, so. Um, will he probably be show for yeah. Summer Jam, I'm assuming? I'm pretty sure he'll be there. Um, yeah. yeah. I would probably see Summer Jam, eight, uh, Summer Jam being in... Uh, I wonder, was it last year, What? Was it Friendship last year, Summer Jam? Oh, sorry. Could you repeat uh, that last year? Uh, I wasn't sure if anybody else got that one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> did, I, did I cut out, or did I... Uh, uh, Scott's yeah. still in robot uh, mode. Oh, uh, well, oh, uh, can you guys hear me fine now? Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. then, uh, I, uh, my, uh, my bad. Uh, I was saying that, uh, I'm assuming, wait, I'm assuming that, uh, that everyone's going to be really, uh, really hyped for Summer Jam, but I was also wondering, was, wasn't it free entry last year? Yeah. Would he, uh, do you guys think he'll do that again for us, Biggie? Uh, who knows? Maybe. I would love to play City. And it's, it, 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 seems to, it seems to draw more people doing it that way, so... Oh, yeah, totally. Even though know, the, uh, I think, even though know, the numbers that we it said we had was not the numbers that were there, but, you know, I would just love to see this, see all the people that, uh, some of the people, I guess, that, uh, well, was there a lot, was there a ton of people new at Winter Ball besides really Sign? Oh, I mean, Sign wasn't new, but I mean, like he made, made, he really showed himself. Not new, but. not not new people, but I mean, there was it was about fifty people entered. Yeah, just because yeah. you know, it was like 13, 13 people in those whole pools. So, um, but uh, I guess the my my last uh, thoughts on Winter Brawl, um, even though obviously I projected myself to do better than I did um, I was more than than happy to see Jay win because here's a guy who um, mostly in Is caliber probably I don't know how much of this poured off to his regular regular life but um, he just no matter what his accomplishments were um, he found a way to not be satisfied with them. <laughs> and, like, even when he won Filthy Cup, you know, where he had to beat me and MT Fighter, who were, you know, le- I would say legitimate threats to, to win the tournament. It just yeah, but I had to be two laces with Mitsurugi. I mean, that's not, that's not that hard. <laughs> well, um, anyway, so, to see... <laughs> 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 to see um, just this one seem to finally do it. It's like he finally realized I did something. I accomplished something. This is worth being satisfied with. And that uh, just having seen the come up from 2009 up until now, it's like you finally get that point where, you know, you, you did something that you yourself can say is worthy of, of being proud of. So. Yeah. That I think, to me, uh, is why that was so uh, was I th- why I was so happy to see that happen. So, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Uh, anything? I guess anything else? Uh, I think we're gonna end it off here. You said. Yeah. All right. Um, I'd like to thank Fuko for giving drawing uh, Samurai J. Um, that's oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Fuko, if you're if you're listening to this, can you send me this this picture? I'll, I can send I'll it to this. you. That's true. Okay, great. Um, uh, thank you for listening to Spectator Cast number four, and as always, remember to blame wind. But-